Hey guys, thanks for coming in tonight. I appreciate you joining me. Hope all is well with everyone. Uh, so we are gearing up to do a bunny live stitch along. So here again is the cute little bunny we're planning on doing. Uh, our little, uh, it's from my embroidery kit of the little bunny. Uh, you can stitch it in either the pink or blue. Uh, but we are getting ready to do that. I see some of you coming to coming in. Uh, thanks for doing that. Uh, why don't you uh, say hi? I'm just I'm trying to get the comments to work this time. So I also have it on my I, my uh, other phone. I'm gonna try and get that going right now with everyone. So thanks for bearing with me for a sec here. All right, hold on. Oh, good. I'm seeing the comments now. Excellent. Great, I don't have to deal with the other phone. I can see you, awesome. Thanks guys for coming in again. Again, we are getting ready for the bunny stitch along. I am getting super excited for it. So just to recap a little bit, uh, we are doing a few little videos here beforehand uh, just, just to get jazzed up about embroidery. And I know there's some issues that people have with embroidery and I'm trying to address those. Uh, right away before we get started. So if you didn't see my video from a couple nights ago, it was on how to make a perfect French knot and the three things you might be doing that will that are messing you up. So be sure to check that out, especially if you've had trouble with French knots in the past. Tonight we are going to talk about how to get perfect, beautiful, even lovely stitches. So here we go. We want we don't want stitches that are all over the place. We want perfect, nice, even stitches. So that is the plan today. We're going to chit chat about that. So again, we are getting ready for the bunny, stitching the bunny. Uh, more info on that. We will be, the actual stitch along will be April 3rd through April 7th, and it will be 7 p.m. So that's a Monday through Friday from 7 p.m. Central Time to 8 p.m and we will be working on that. I am going to have a big sale for it soon, uh, a big sale for the, the kit if you want to stitch along. The actual videos are free. You can come join me here, and we'll be doing it all there and um, here on the Penguin and Fish Bunny Live Stitch Along group, so feel free to join me here. Uh, if you haven't downloaded your embroidery cheat sheet, you can do that. Uh, it is in the uh, uh, description here, so you can check that out. But let's get going. So um, needle size, Martha, I'm using a size five embroidery needle. The things you wanna look at when you look for an embroidery needle is that it has a large enough eye to put, uh, to put your floss through and it has a sharp point. It is different than a cross stitch needle. A cross stitch needle has a blunted end. You, you need a sharp end to go through the fabric. So thanks for the question. I am actually seeing your comments tonight. I couldn't see them a couple nights ago. So, all right, let's get going here, guys. I want to show you how to make your perfect, even, lovely, beautiful stitches. And it really comes down to two things, I think. There are neat stitches and even stitches. Those are the two issues. So it's, it's not just one idea. I think I can break it down to those two things. So I'm going to flip you around, and we will get going. Thanks for joining me, guys. Okay, so here we are. Let's just take a look at this for a sec. <laughs> this is my little drawing that I did. So this is uh, what I think uh, people have people struggle with, right? So here are some perfect, even, lovely stitches, and here's what we get a lot of the time, right? We got spaces in between the stitches. There's some tension issues. This is like blooped up a little bit and they're just not even or they're not all the same size, right? So I'm gonna start out with neat stitches. So like I said, I think there's two things that we need to deal with. It's having neat stitches, and by neat stitches I mean where, you know, your needle accuracy, where you're coming in and out of the same hole, uh, where they're all, uh, they're not tilted, they're all nice and straight. That is neat stitches. Even stitches, when I say even stitches, I'm talking about the stitch length is all similar. So all the same stitch length. So the size, the distance of the stitch, the size of the stitch appears to be the same. So that's issue two. Okay, to start out with the neat stitches, I think the main thing we need to look at is 
your accuracy of needle placement. So to talk about that, really we need to talk about the two different styles of stitching. So there are two styles. There are sewing versus stabbing. So here we go. I'm going to write that down for you guys. So first we're going to do sewing. And we'll do stabbing. And we'll talk about both of those. Because I think it has a big uh, thing to do with uh, needle accuracy. So I'm going to actually turn this around to stitch. I always like stitching um, away from me. So for a back stitch, you're going to go, uh, you're going to start a stitch away from your starting point, and then you're going to go backwards to that starting point, and then up a stitch length away. So for sewing, the sewing style of doing it, we're going to go in and come out at the same, within the same movement. So let's do that again here. <laughs> I know we're going to be upside down for a little while here. But all right, so then we're going to go back in and come out. Go back in and come out on the line. In at our last stitch and then out a stitch length away later on the line. Okay? So, and then I'm going to just come to the back. So that's the sewing method where you go in and out in the same bit. So let's just analyze that for a little bit. So I do have some goofy things happening. I have a little bit of fabric in between here. Uh, it's angled a little funny. They're not, they're pretty even. The stitches seem pretty even. Uh, that, that one's a little smaller maybe, but uh, the, uh, the neatness isn't quite there. And I find that is a problem with the sewing method where you come in, where you go into the fabric and out of the fabric in the same way. I think it's difficult to find the perfect placement to come out with because it, it's difficult. You know, you're kind of just grasping at getting the right place on the line. You can't really get your accuracy, accurate needle placement when you do the sewing version in and out. And I think it's hard to look at there. It's hard to get a uh, good spacing when you're going in at a horizontal angle like this, like you're not gonna, you might not make that hole, right? You wanna go in the exact same hole, but you might not make it with the sewing method. So sewing method clearly is not my favorite way for uh, getting neat stitches. So what is the alternative? The alternative is the stabbing method. So to, the stabbing method is where you, you come up through the fabric, you pull the fabric all the way through, and then you stab it back down through the fabric vertically. Your needle is vertical, and you pull it all the way through, and then you come back up. After pulling it all the way through, your needle is vertical again, and then you can go right, since you're holding your needle vertical, you can go right back in to that exact same hole. There we go. See, I'm in the exact same hole. I can stab back up and straight down with the needle right back in that exact same hole. Let's do it one more time. So you kind of see the other thing I'm doing is, do you see that point, that little uh, bump that's happening? So I'm going to drag it across. You see that, that point? I am dragging my needle across the back of my fabric, and that will help me know where to place my point. So I'm not just, I'm not just randomly like coming up. I'm not guessing. I'm dragging my point and then going right to where that stitch is. That stitch should be right on the line. So again, dragging so I can see that point. Oh, that looks good. Let's go there. And then coming straight up and then going straight down right into that hole. So that's the stabbing method. So uh, two different methods. Uh, you can do either, uh, either one, whichever works best for you. However, uh, if 
you're going for neatness, I would err on the side of doing the stabbing method. Uh, because we have that vertical needle going down, we can really see the hole. So needle uh, accuracy is very good with the stabbing method. It may not be as quick as the sewing method where we're going in and out at the same time. There is that extra step of pulling your thread all the way through to the back and coming up. So it does take a little bit more time, but look at each one of these. I'm going in that exact same hole that we came up on. This one, we were not so accurate there. See, we got a little, little piece of thread in between. So that is the difference. So when I'm going for accuracy, and you know, we're doing the back stitch here because there are a lot of back stitches in the bunny here, but let's look really close here. Every single stitch is coming up in the same hole. And it really makes a difference. Uh, those little details, like coming back in the exact same hole, uh, if you do, if you mess that up, a few times it starts to get noticeable. So uh, that vertical, the vertical needle placement of that stabbing method really, really does a good job with that. So drag your needle so you can see the point. Come up at the next stitch vertically and then vertically down through that exact same hole. See, so the angle, if you come in at an angle, then it, you have a more tendency of maybe accidentally grabbing some extra some extra threads. See, I'm going at an angle, I'm grabbing extra threads. Uh, if you go vertically, you can get right in that same hole. So that's the stabbing method. Uh, you know, sewing method it does have, have its place. There are some um, there are some stitches like a stem stitch that, that you almost need to do the sewing method, but we're going to do a lot of back stitch. So stabbing is the method I like to use. Is there a difference for the lefty? There shouldn't be. So no, I'm going to just attempt left handed. So I'm going to come up. So here's the sewing method. There shouldn't be any difference. You're going down and coming back up. Going down back up. Again, I don't think that's as accurate. Here is the stabbing method as a lefty, which I am not, so this is kind of interesting. So straight down, pull it all the way through. You're going to drag your needle across. Come up where you're at the right point, and then vertically find that hole and vertically go straight, straight down. See, there's that hole. So same difference. It does not matter if you are a lefty or a righty. So that's good news for you lefties. <laughs> so all right. So that's the sewing method versus the stabbing method. If you want neat stitches where you don't have these little gaps, you want to do the stabbing method. And the main thing to remember with that is the vertical, the vertical needle when you go back in. Vertical needle right through that hole. So okay. So the next issue is the even stitches, right? So I'm going to just come up right here. All right, so for even stitches, what I'm talking about is stitches that are all a similar stitch length, right? And uh, how I think about that is um, something I call active looking, looking, so active looking. And what I mean when I think of active looking is having tunnel vision and seeing the whole picture back and forth. So here's what I mean by that. For tunnel vision, I'm going to do a back stitch in this direction. So tunnel vision, here's what I mean. So I have a stitch that, that that's that length, right? So I'm looking at that stitch, I'm dragging my needle, and I want to stop the needle at what looks like the same length stitch. So I'm only, oops, sorry guys, I'm only looking at the previous stitch, and I'm making that space as accurate as, you know, as close to that size as I can. Then we'll stab down to 
the hole again. And now the next stitch, I'm only going to look at the stitch I just did. And we'll come up about the same length, right? So that's tunnel vision. The tunnel vision is looking at the same, or that, at the stitch that you previous did. But here's the problem if you only do tunnel vision. I'll do a few stitches. All right, that seems about the same length, so let's do that. All right, that seems about the same length again. So here's tunnel vision where it becomes a problem. That's about the same length. I'm only looking at the stitch I did before. That's about the same length. All right, so if we look at the previous stitches, this stitch does look like this stitch, this stitch does look like this stitch, this stitch does look like this stitch, and this looks like this, but look at from the beginning to end. This stitch is huge compared to this one, right? So uh, that's, the, that's the one thing with tunnel vision. You can't just have tunnel vision. You have to switch between um, seeing the whole picture and tunnel vision. So you need the tunnel vision to make the next stitch, but then you have to look at the whole picture to see how you're comparing to the beginning, right? So if I'm only comparing to the stitch I did before, then I'm going to end up maybe getting bigger or smaller or it's not going to be accurate overall. So I need to look at the stitch I did before and then I need to look at all of them, see how they compare. Like I can see this is much bigger than this. So my next stitch, I might be like, oh wow, I have to make it bigger to average it out. So it ends up, um, overall, my piece ends up being closer. So I'm going to make this one just a hair bigger. And now I'm going to look at the previous stitch for the tunnel vision. But now I'm going to assess as a whole. So, all right, it looks like I'm getting closer to these. So all I have to do is keep checking and keep assessing as I go. So that's the tunnel vision and the uh, uh, seeing the whole picture. You have to actively look. So you have to actively use the tunnel vision, but right when you're done, you have to compare it to all your other stitches and kind of get the average of what you're doing. So this is, that's the kind of talk that's going on in my head when I do this. However, here's a little trick. You can also draw on your line before you get started. So you can draw every single stitch on your line. If you want the accuracy, but you don't think you can do the active looking yet, you don't think you can compare the two stitches and then compare to the all, you could measure out your stitches and come up right through and down through the stitches. So if you're nervous about that, this might be a good solution to get started. However, this is perfectly fine to me. If you start big, get a little smaller, but then you correct along the way, as a whole, uh, your, your stitches are look, gonna look pretty good. So let's look at the bunny again. If you dig way down into here, you know, if you're looking, you're, you're a tunnel vision on all the stitches, you know, this stitch here is much smaller than this stitch, right? And it's actually smaller than this stitch too. But the average of all the stitches, they are all in that same amount of space. So I've corrected. I made this one too small, so I made the next one a little bit bigger. And, you know, you're just trying to average out to that stitch length uh, that you're going for throughout your piece. So that's that's the main deal with um, even. So you got your neat stitches with the stabbing method and your even stitches by doing that tunnel vision and looking at the overall picture at the same time. So that is that. So a few other things I want to talk about is how to approach, I'm going to get a new piece of thread. What do you do when you approach a point? 
because that's where some of the accuracy goes away, right? Or some of the even evenness of stitches. So we're gonna look at that. Oh, so here's a little trick for threading your needle. If you squeeze your uh, thread in your fingers like that and then release, so squeeze and right when you start to see it release, place the eye of your needle over that thread and then keep releasing and it will go through the needle and you can grab it, pull it through. Super easy way to thread a needle. I'm going to just tie a knot to get started and we will take a look at what it's like when you approach a point. So I'm going to snip this so it's out of my way. All right. So here's what's going on in my head when I'm approaching a point. So I'm stitching along, uh, I'm doing the stabbing method, and I'm actively looking. Uh, so, all right, now I, now I can see, oh man, I've stitched this line, and look, I'm coming to a point. So I have some choices here. So I usually stop stitching. Let's do our final stitch here. And now I look, okay, my stitch length is about like this. I have some choices here. I have to get from here to here. So I can do it in two stitches, which would make two kind of big stitches, or I can do it in three stitches, which would make some smaller stitches. So we have to kind of assess what we think is the best way. So I'm gonna do three stitches. We'll see what that looks like. Oh, no problem, Judith. Thanks for coming in. All right, so this is the three stitches. So because I did three, all of my stitches ended up being a little smaller, right? Because I was kind of averaging what, um, what, how many stitches could I do to get to this point. Um, and then the other way that we could have done it, like if this is, we're lining up our last stitch here, the other option would have been two stitches, right? So two stitches would have looked like, you know, it was about right here, right? So those stitches look actually kind of big, right? So I think the three method looks nicer than the two. So all we're doing is assessing. So as we approach, and you can even assess further back. So let's do a couple of stitches. I do this whenever I see a point coming. I will stop stitching, and I will think, okay, I will do my overall uh, looking at the whole picture, which is, okay, here are, here's the size of my stitches. How many do I think it will take to get here so I can kind of divide it up? So I could do four, so it would be divided like this. One, two, three, four. I could do it in three. And in this case, I think the four would be more accurate. So let's just do one more stitch and then we can assess again. All right. So if I was doing four, then I would divide this into three. All right now my stitches are getting maybe a little small, but if I divide it in half, they still look maybe too big, right? Either side of my needle there is looking kind of big if I'm comparing all of my stitches. This one got a little bit bigger. So if I just I was comparing just that one stitch, this half might be okay. But since these other previous stitches were smaller, my third might be a little bit more accurate, and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm, that is my train of thought every single time I come to a point. I am actively uh, kind of visualizing what three stitches would look instead of two, and then making it just a choice. And in the end, it's all going to average out as long as you 
um, are looking at the whole picture as you go. So that's how I come to a point and have even stitches, you know, relatively similar length. You know, you can tell they're a little bit smaller, but overall they're going to feel all the same when you um, do the whole entire thing. So the last thing I, I want to share with you guys is curves. So I'm going to jump down here. So I actually don't worry about having completely even stitches when I'm when I'm embroidering. I like to vary them, um, especially when I come around curves. And here's why. Uh, so how could we make that curve? I'm going to just draw right next to it. So the more stitches you do in a curve, the more accurate your curve is going to be. Because here, here's how we can interpret this. We could make a stitch that goes from here to here to here, but that would look like a point, right? So that doesn't look very curvy. So let's add more stitches. We could add, we could do it in three stitches. So that would look like one. Then we have a, maybe a flat stitch here and a stitch here. You know, and then we have our stitches continuing the other direction, right? So that looks a lot more curvy, but what if we do four stitches? We could do one, two, three, four, and that's even more curvy. Now we're really seeing a curve versus just the two stitches. So what I, and you know, if we did five stitches, six stitches, seven stitches, eight stitches, we'd even get more of a curve. However, there's always a, a point where the stitches would get too small that it wouldn't look anything like the stitch length of our piece here. So you kind of have to assess. So I'm going to stitch up into the curve. All right, so here's kind of my last stitch before I hit the curve. So now I gotta assess how many stitches, how do I wanna do it? Do I wanna do it a you know a pointy one like that? Do I wanna go three? Do I wanna go four? I kind of base it on my stitch length and how accurate I want the curve. So if I want, if I'm okay, uh, if this is okay with three stitches. Like if I think I can get that curve in three stitches, I will do it in three because that looks like the closest to the stitch length um, of my previous stitches. I'm always looking at my previous stitches. So there we are. Now we're kind of back on the path again. So that was basically three. So, but sometimes what I like to do, and we're running out of thread here, so we'll see how we, if we can get it. So I'm gonna approach, you know what, I'm gonna grab another piece of thread, you guys. Got a little bit hanging out here. So sometimes to get more accurate curves, I like adding stitches in. So let me just tie a knot in the end here again. Alrighty. So I might have a really tight curve. Like let's say this curve goes like this. It's even tighter, right? So as I approach that, let's say I have some bigger stitches even. This is my stitch length. Well, as I'm approaching that curve, that stitch length really is not going to work for me, is it? Like with this stitch length, I'm going to end up making just that point, and I don't want that point. So I'm going to be okay with, I'm going to just reduce my stitches a little bit. See, so now they're almost like half the size even, but I know that the more stitches in the curve are going to make it curvier. So I'm, see I'm making the stitches smaller, and we are getting a really accurate curve, aren't we? But I'm, it, you know, my stitch length isn't as big as it used to be, but you know what? 
I'm okay with that. I like airing on the side of really pretty curves. Overall, I'm going for the, the prettiness of the line versus the stitches all the exact same size. So you see, even though our stitch length was that size, I shrunk it down, but look how pretty that curve is. That is a really accurate curve. Whereas if I kept this stitch length, we would have had to do it in the two stitches and we'd have a point. But reducing it a little and we have a perfect curve. So that is my approach to curves. I know a lot of people really want their stitches exactly the same all the way throughout, but I say meh, I like the nice line. Let's make a nice curve by reducing it just a little and then when you come back around, you can get your bigger stitches again. And I think that works perfectly fine. If you get lucky and you can do the same stitch length all the way around the curve, then we're, uh, then that's good to go. You can keep the same stitch length, but you know, if you have a tight curve like this and your stitches started too big, then shrink them down, bring them back up to the right size afterwards. No problem whatsoever. So there you have it, guys. That is um, kind of my approach. This is, uh, this is, yeah, everything I said out loud here is literally what is going through my brain as I am stitching. So again, it's remembering to keep that vertical needle, which you can do with the stabbing. That gives you the really accurate uh, neat stitches versus, you know, the, the sewing method. I did this, this one was the sewing method as well. It becomes a little more difficult to get those accurate stitches and it's because your needle, your needle is going horizontal, it's not vertical and it's kind of difficult. It's difficult to get right and up in the right spot. So if you're just starting, I would recommend the stabbing method. And then also remember the tunnel vision plus the looking at the whole picture. So you're always looking at what you, the stitch you just did, but then you're going to immediately look at your whole picture and assess, okay, we got a little small there. Let's start getting bigger again, because my, I started out with some larger stitches. So it's that constant back and forth, and that's how you get the even stitches. And you know, how to approach a point, you got to ask yourself, would it look better with two or would it look better with three stitches? Then you got to make the call. And that is the same thing with the curves. And it's okay if you shrink up your stitches a little for the purpose of getting a better curve versus, you know, staying with the same stitch length but getting a point instead of a curve. So that is that. Um, let me know if you have any questions about that. And you can answer, you can ask questions after we're done being live as well. Uh, I will be checking this again and I will answer all your questions tomorrow for sure. So again, I'm going to flip you guys around and we will call it a little evening here. So hey guys, so I hope it helped a little bit and we will be going through a lot of that again when we are stitching and again it's going to be live so you are welcome to ask your questions as we're working on this together. If you're having issues I just you can just describe it and we will figure it out and the best thing it's going to be a whole group of us. So. Uh, someone here will have an answer and we will figure it out and that's that's the beauty of being live so that is the plan and again the the bunny we will start the bunny April 3rd and it's gonna go through April 3rd through April 7th there will be a PDF version available which is gonna be great if you're overseas or you just have all the supplies already and you don't need the kit uh, but the kit will be available on sale coming up too. So keep your eyes peeled. Next week will be the sale. And I will um, let you guys know in the email. And I will be doing one more video here. So I hope you check that out. I will send an email when it's going to come up. And it will also I will also let you guys know on the Penguin and Fish Bunny Live Stitch Along group. So I hope you join me here. Uh, and uh, thanks again, guys. I can see your comments this time, which is great. Uh, that's going to be crucial when we are doing our actual live stitch along because the whole fun thing is that we get to chit chat the whole time while we stitch. So I'm excited for that. I, I really am. It's, it's going to be fun. So, all right. I will see you next time, guys. Uh, this will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and it will also stay here on the Penguin Bunny Live Stitch Along group page. If you're if you're on my email list, which you can get to by um, downloading the free 
uh, embroidery cheat sheet, you will get an email with the link to the YouTube as well. So thanks again. I appreciate you guys being here and I will see you later. Adios.